welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and with me today is Shaima Abdullah, Dr. Shaima Abdullah, who is the owner of Rittenhouse Dentists. Dr. Shaima, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having great. me. Great. Oh, thank you for being here. Very, very exciting to meet you in person. I've read about you through the Philadelphia Business Journal's 40 Under 40, and I've really been fascinated with your story. And so I just want to jump right in and ask you, you know, not that many people think about being in the medical profession. Um, particularly dentists. I've heard that it's a, a, tough, a tough job. Um, what sort of was a significant moment for you to decide, not only do I want to be in the medical field, but I want to be a dentist and I want to have my own practice? Right. Yeah. Well, dentistry definitely gets a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. We're commonly ranked pretty high on the most stressful job list or the suicide list, right? Dentists are always like the most likely <laughs> to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. But um, my passion for dentistry actually started at a pretty young age. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of dental issues growing up. Oh. So I ended wow. up spending a lot of time in the dental chair and um, it really transformed me as far as uh, my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So before I had any of my dental issues corrected, I was very shy and insecure, mm -hmm. um, especially about like public speaking or meeting new people or mm -hmm. any type of social situation. Um, after having my dental issues corrected, I became much more confident and I felt like it was like me coming out of my shell. And mm -hmm. that experience really changed my life and I wanted to have that same impact on other people's lives because I knew what a big difference it made for me. And that's really what got me interested in dentistry as a career. So mm -hmm. I was lucky to have an, uh, an amazing dentist mm -hmm. to treat all of my d dental issues and I kind of wanted to be like him. Mm. and follow in his footsteps. Wow. How did you go about choosing sort of what city to start your practice in? Um, so I came to Philadelphia for dental school. I mm -hmm. went to Temple for dental mm -hmm. school. And um, me and my sisters were actually all living together at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like where we all got settled in. Um, <clears throat> my other sisters were in grad school as well. And it was really nice having that like family support sure. while you were in school. So I felt really comfortable in Philadelphia. They ended up going in different directions and they don't live in Philadelphia anymore. But I think having that common experience of like living in the city mm -hmm. and studying here, I got really comfortable and like ended up settling in Philadelphia. And I love it here. It's such a great city. It is a great city. It is a great city. It's a great place to have a yeah. business as well. Mm -hmm. And you're in the Rittenhouse Square area, which is a totally cool place to be. It's Lots an amazing neighborhood, yeah. and we love being part of that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We always we try to do um, we try to have events for the neighborhood at least once a year. So this okay. year we did like a Halloween eat and greet, where oh. we featured um, like tooth friendly treats, and we just ha put a table oh, out like right in front of the idea. practice. Yeah, what a great idea! So we put a table mm -hmm. out, and it had a lot of Halloween decorations. We had little mm -hmm. goodie bags for the kids, mm -hmm. and it was all you know sugar free snacks, things that are healthy for your teeth. Oh my goodness! It's not what stuff that people want for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Most people probably got the goodie bag and were like, "What is this?" <laughs> But they it saw was, it was attractive, way, right? <laughs> yeah, we like being part of the neighborhood, so mm -hmm. we like having events for the neighborhood, mm -hmm. too. So keep a lookout for our next neighborhood oh, event. Oh, good, good. That's, that's really cool. So I loved your story. I mean, and, and I hadn't really thought about the fact that dentistry, you have a chance to really impact people's emotions, not just their teeth. Um, talk yeah. about how you help make people feel and how do you know that um, because I imagine there are kids that sit in a chair and go right. oh, I don't want to be in the dentist right now right well not just yeah. kids I mean a lot of adults have extreme dental phobia mm -hmm. it's really common mm -hmm. I mean it's so much more common than people know mm -hmm. a lot like I would say like 75 percent of the patients that come in 
always we always start the conversation with like I don't want to be here I hate coming <laughs> to the dentist this is my okay. least favorite place okay so I really try to create a very pleasant environment for mm -hmm. the patients because I'm not just trying to I mean we want to improve their health and we want to get them we want to get their oral health where it needs to be but we also want to provide a pleasant experience so that they come back right right experience that's I think right. it's, a, it's a key word yeah. so we offer a lot of extra treats at the office we have Netflix goggles so you can watch a TV show or a movie while you're having your dental treatment done so if you're one of the patients that just wants a distraction right. doesn't want to see any of the tools and right. doesn't want to hear anything that's happening doesn't want to hear the drill they can basically get plugged into the goggles and wow. watch a movie. By the time the movie's done, their appointment's over, everything's done. Why doesn't have that? Okay, okay. What <laughs> else? What else? <laughs> you can also opt to have um, hand paraffin treatment, which is like a nice warm wax for your hands. You, d you dip your hands in. Um, it's just a really nice, warm, pleasant feeling that helps mm -hmm. you get relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then when you peel off the wax at the end of the appointment, your hands feel nice and soft the rest of the day. Wow. That's and we also cool. have um, Pandora headphones. So for patients that don't want to want a little bit distraction, but don't want to be completely out of the experience, mm -hmm. they could plug into some headphones, listen to whatever music they want, and just be more relaxed for their dental appointment. Wow, that's great psychology. Yeah, we'll try <laughs> I know. I know it's an always like an unpleasant. It could be mm -hmm. an unpleasant mm -hmm. experience. So I try to do everything I can to make it a more pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like little things like chapstick before mm -hmm. you start your appointment, or just having like a friendly conversation with the right. patient just to help right. put people at ease. Right. Because yeah. it is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to your question about um, how it feels to change somebody's yeah. smile, yeah. that's the for me that's the funnest thing about being mm -hmm. a dentist, and that's okay. what gives me like all my energy and all my drive. So just a couple weeks ago, I had a patient who was getting ready for their engagement photo shoot. Ooh. And he has a missing tooth, like towards okay. the front of his mouth. And he was okay. always really self-conscious about it. So, and he's also like a dental phobic patient. So he okay. was like putting it off for so oh, long. Sure. And finally his fiance <laughs> was like, look, you need to get this taken care of because- I'm not gonna marry you. No. Right, I don't wanna see that in the photos. Uh -huh. So finally he came in and in one day I was able to, we placed an implant and I put a temporary crown on his tooth. So he walked out with a tooth that day. Wow. And yeah, the difference in just his, like he when he walked in, he was so nervous and scared mm -hmm. and he put the Netflix goggles on. An hour later, I told him to take the goggles off. I handed him a mirror and he was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I have a tooth now. Like it looked great. It looked very wow. natural and he was mm -hmm. so excited. So seeing that excitement and that transformation mm -hmm. on another patient, that's mm -hmm. that's what gives me all my motivation that's and all my drive. That's a great story. Yeah. I, you know, you are totally changing the way that I think about dentistry. Um, oh, good. That is, I'm glad to that hear that. That is a really great story. So what's next for you? I mean, when you think about your business, you, you own this business. Um, what's next? So I never wanted to have just one dental practice in mm -hmm. one area. I always thought of, you know, expanding mm -hmm. and growing my brand. Um, so Rittenhouse Dentist just recently celebrated our five-year anniversary. So mm -hmm. I purchased... Congratulations. Yeah, it was yeah. 2011 when we started, and now mm -hmm. it's 2016, mm -hmm. so that was fast. And last year, I actually opened a second location on City Line Ave. Mm -hmm. So I'm hopefully looking to open a third location and in the Wayne, King of Prussia. Oh, and you're right area. in the zone here. Yeah, okay. Right in this okay. area. Excellent, excellent. Very exciting. So... As you grow your business and you continue your community involvement, where do you see yourself five years from now? So five years from now, I see myself with um, having at least five dental practices in the Philadelphia area, I would say, mm -hmm. and being actively involved in the community. I want mm -hmm. to I want to do um, events for people that don't have regular access to dental care. Oh, that's so not wonderful. just, I participated in Give Kids a Smile Day, which mm -hmm. is mainly for children that mm -hmm. don't have access to dental care, but I also want to focus on adults that mm -hmm. don't have access. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to at least do a couple of events a year, 
giving mm -hmm. people more access to dental care. Having you on the show is significant, and you have an opportunity to give our listeners a message. As a dentist, as an entrepreneur, as a woman, um, and as, I, I love the part when you said that you and your sisters were all here in Philadelphia in graduate school. So as a part of a, a person who's part of an, a family that values education, what's a message that you'd want to leave our listeners with? I want to let everyone know that um, most people do see their dentist more than they see their family physician or their regular mm -hmm. doctor. So mm -hmm. a dentist is usually the first person to pick up on things like potential diabetes mm -hmm. or things that you might not notice on a regular basis, but your dentist can say like, hey, I noticed that your gums are a little inflamed. You might want to get this checked mm -hmm. out. So even if you're going to the dentist as just a regular cleaning and checkup can also change mm. your life and really affect your health positively. Mm. Wow. So you're sort of the gateway. You're one of the folks that can make the early warning signal. Definitely. Mm. Yep. And mm -hmm. gum disease has also been linked to issues like heart disease. So mm. it's not just, I wasn't aware of that. we're not okay. just treating the oral health. We're also mm. treating the body as a whole. Mm. What percentage of your patients are um, adults versus children? At my center city practice, I would say it's about 95% adults mm -hmm. and 5% children. Mm -hmm. On the city line office location, we see a lot more families. Oh, okay. So right, the, com right. the percentage there is about 70% adults, 30% mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you, based on what you're doing, might influence someone to d decide to be a dentist at some point because of how you've transformed their life. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's in dental school right now who might be thinking of starting their own business? I would tell them that they picked a great career, especially mm. as a woman. I think that dentistry is an amazing career because mm -hmm. it allows you to choose your own schedule. So it leaves time for if you want to have a family, if you want to have kids, if you need to be a little flexible. Mm -hmm. It really allows you to kind of pick and choose your schedule because we don't have a whole lot of after hours emergencies. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're on call. So it's different than oh. some of the medical professions where you're constantly having to answer a pager or brush mm -hmm. back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that flexibility. And I think that owning your own business um, is definitely scary, especially in the beginning when you <laughs> are still trying to figure everything out and right. you don't know the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. But once you get started, as, as long as you have the right team of people around you. I love that you said team. Right. And I've been yeah. really lucky to have an amazing group of women that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, I started the business with just two employees, and one of them is still at the practice, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we're at 13 employees, which I'm really proud of. Thank you. Yes, yes. And they're all amazingly talented women. Mm -hmm. So I feel really blessed to have such a positive, smart group of people that I get to work with and interact with. Oh, wow, that's great to hear. Wow. You know, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I'm, I'm really captivated by your smile. So I, <laughs> I may you. be calling you and saying, okay, I'd like to have an appointment. Um, and I, I'm also kind of curious to try out those Netflix goggles. So I haven't. <laughs> but um, it's been, it's really been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. If folks want to get in touch with you, how should they do that? Our website is RittenhouseDentist.com, so it's mm -hmm. R-I-T-T-E-N-H-O-U-S-E Dentist.com, mm -hmm. and you can make an appointment. You can check out pictures of the office. We also mm -hmm. have a Facebook and Instagram link on the bottom of the website, okay. so there's a lot, a lot of fun stuff on there, too. Oh, good. Well, I, I can definitely, uh, definitely see that, so thank you so much for being on the show. Thank it's you. It's really been this a pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Good, yes. good. I'm glad. I, I want to create an experience that folks aren't afraid of. <laughs> um, I'll have to, again, have to think about those, uh, the paraffin wax also. You got my attention there. <laughs> so um, thank you again. Thanks, friend. Sure. Well, there you have it. Significant stories by significant entrepreneurs. My guest today was Dr. Shima Abdullah, and she is the owner of Rittenhouse Dentist. 
Thank you so much again for being on the program, and I look for our audience to join us on our next episode. Thank you.